Today we're going to make um, like traditional fish and chips. So we're just going to make a ice water batter and we're going to make basically triple cooked chips. We blanch them uh, in water, then we bring them up to the boil in a bit of uh, oil. Uh, and then with the same oil, we um, take it up to frying temperature and then refry them. So it's a bit of a process. We'll go through it from um, start to finish. Um, so we're just going to start with the potatoes. We've got a pan on. Normally I'd bring them up from cold, but um, this pan I've preheated the water, just a bit of salt, just a bit of table salt in there, just to get the, the seasoning started. So you get a bit of salt going into the potatoes at the beginning. Uh, and then I've got some Maris Piper, uh, Maris Piper potatoes here, which we've peeled, obviously. Cut these down into like chunky sized chips. And then just gonna make... What if you can't get Maris Pipers? What's uh, another good alternative? I always buy the, the net potatoes. Whenever I see the netted potato, they're like five kilo nets of potatoes in the supermarket. Sometimes from Egypt and sometimes they're from uh, Lebanon. If we can't get the Maris Pipers, I will always tell the guys to go out and buy um, whatever potatoes you can find in the nets. And generally, you get a similar result. So, depending on how many chips you like, I know everybody likes a lot of chips, but you know, you want a good, a good what? Eight to 10 pieces each. So just gonna drop these in. And I wanna bring that up to the boil. When the water starts boiling, I'm gonna turn it down to a simmer. And what I'm looking for is like the edges of the potatoes just start breaking. If you can see them now, they're, um, they're very much, you know, in shape perfect line so when they're ready I'll show you the line again and you'll see it started to break up a little bit and that's that's what I always do for roast potatoes and chips same same method while they're slowly cooking we're gonna start the batter plain flour all-purpose flour bicarbonate of soda salt white vinegar and iced water uh, and when I say iced water this is what I mean so and then just drop some ice cubes in just to chill it now I don't want to put the ice cubes in the batter but I want cold water so for that I need to get the ice in there plain all-purpose flour in a bowl good pinch of salt and then I've got um, bicarbonate of soda so just gonna put that in I'm gonna keep a little bit back for my peas which I'll explain later put the vinegar on top of the bicarb and you'll see it fizz up you can see it fizzing up that's that's the reaction you want mix that first just carefully and then I'm gonna start adding the water. I'm just gonna stop the ice cubes from going in. And you can start with a good glug, but, but don't put it all in. With all our recipes, I think, kind of repeat ourselves a little bit. Don't put everything in at once, because sometimes things change. I mean, generally, you've got the, the rough quantities, which are tried and tested recipes, so they do work. But sometimes, if you put it all in at once and you stare at it, wondering why it's not the same, then you won't necessarily find an answer, but if you hold back and just add it bit by bit, then you can see what's going on with whatever you're making. And this time it's the batter, you can see when it needs water and when it doesn't. To get that perfect, perfect batter on your fish, you need to dip it in plenty of batter. So you don't want to be like scraping the fish around the, the tray on your last piece, trying to get that last bit of batter on the fish. It's better to have a little bit excess rather than not enough, definitely. So that's coming together now. Still very thick, still a little bit lumpy, so I'm just gonna try and beat out the lumps. Don't, don't worry too much, they're only little bits. So that's, that's pretty much almost there. So I'm just gonna give that a good whisk now. That's going in the fridge. So potatoes are now about there. The shape's gone, so before it was a straight line. Now, now the shape has started to break down and the potatoes have started to cook. So very gently, just gonna lift these out. So I'm just gonna, don't matter if they break a little bit, don't worry, but obviously you wanna try and keep, we're gonna get them cooled down. Then we're gonna blanch them in uh, oil at around 130, 140. Then we're gonna chill them again. And then when we come to finish and serve our fish and chips, we have a pan on, you know, a pan of oil at frying temperature, 180, 190. And they're just gonna go in the fridge now. And I want them cold, being very careful. They've then got to go back into oil and then back out again on the plate. So we've got to be really, really careful. But they're gonna firm up a little bit when they cool down. So I'm gonna drop them in the fridge. Next, we're gonna do the crushed peas. So we're just gonna warm up a pan. Uh, we're gonna drop a little bit of unsalted butter in there. We want it bubbling like that. What we do not want is any smoke coming off it. Nicely melted. 
Just frozen peas is absolutely fine. So in they go. This takes no more than five minutes to cook. So just make sure your heat in your pan hasn't gone cold. As always, you know, keep your heat consistent. I'm just gonna drop a good pinch of salt in there. And then like a gram of uh, bicarb soda again. So there's bicarb in the, um, the batter. And then we're putting a little bit in here. And the secret of that is it keeps your peas nice and green. Now, if you put too much of that in, your peas are gonna be really horrible and sour. So honestly, just a tiny bit, no more than a gram. Straight away, as soon as you see that boiling, um, I've written on the recipe, if you need a drop of water, add a drop of water, but you can see the moisture that's come out of the peas, so there's no need. So these have cooked really, really fast. We just break them with a spatula or a wooden spoon, just into the corners. If it's cooked too much, the green color disappears. So we just help it with a little bit of that bicarb and that just helps it stay green. So that's going to the fridge. Now we're gonna make uh, just tartar sauce, diced red onion, chopped gherkin or cornichon, chopped capers, chopped parsley, and mayonnaise. Capers, um, I'm not gonna put that all of those capers in because they're quite strong, so just a little bit, like half of that. Um, onions, just raw red onions. I put the red in because they look nice in the sauce. You get uh, the color comes out a little bit in the sauce. And then chopped parsley, just freshly chopped parsley. And then you just mix it together. And that is your tartar sauce. There's a lot of flavor going on in there. So it's a nice, chunky, chunky tartar sauce to go with your fish and chips. Just got the, the oil up to temperature. Um, just having a little look. So you want, I've just put a little bit of potato in there and it's just bubbling, all right? So that's what you want. You want around 130, 135 degrees centigrade. So I'm just gonna put them in gently, not one by one, but you know, spoon by spoon. The reason I'm putting them on the spoon first is that I don't want to splash myself, basically. If I just chuck them in there, then I'm probably likely to splash myself with hot oil, which I don't want to do. I'm just giving them a little stir, just to make sure nothing's stuck to the bottom of the pan. Pushing them around the pan a little bit. And you can see that they're already, they're already, like the outside is it's getting, you can see this? It's starting to fry a little bit, but if it was, if it was hot, 180, 190 degrees, it would be coloring. So the reason we do this temperature is no color. We want to sort of softly fry it, but no color. And you can see like it's starting to bubble up on the sides. They're almost boiling in oil rather than frying in oil. And that's, that's exactly what you want. So you've got these nice, yeah, I can feel it as well. It's getting crispy on the outside. Yes, it's hot, but it's not, it's not crazy hot. So I'm gonna start taking these out now, very gently. Drain off the oil. Bring your plate or your tray up. You need a plate or a tray. As you can see, they're like really, I don't know, sometimes you go somewhere and you get chips that aren't quite crispy enough, and that's what these are. So they're, they're almost chips, but they're not quite. Shake them onto your plate. Make me hungry. Yeah, I'm looking forward to eating this, to be honest. I'm gonna put them in the fridge now, chill them down again. Uh, and when we come to serve it, when the fish is ready, so we've got the peas ready, the batter's rested, chips will be ready in about 20 minutes. Uh, we've got the tartar sauce ready to serve, so we're just gonna portion up the fish and then we'll be ready to go. Haddock fillets or cod fillets or local fish, we use shari. Um, it's kind of a similar sort of meat uh, to what you get off the cod. It's, it's all kind of similar. We've got this nice fillet of cod. So I'm just gonna trim off the tiny skinny end. I'm gonna cut it on the angle and I'm just gonna... So you're cutting it on the angle really so that so you can... a, it's just equal thickness all the way through yeah, roughly. So really. it's gonna cook yeah, the same time. Exactly. I don't, I don't want that part to be dry and overcooked because even in batter it will dry out and overcook before that the thicker part's cooked. You don't need to worry about tidying them up and trimming them up and everything. We're just gonna basically dip this in the batter and fry it so you're gonna have a nice piece of crispy fish like that. Okay, so we've got everything, all the components to the fish and chips. There's loads going on. So we've got our fish ready. Um, I've got a little plate of flour because we're just gonna dust the fish in flour, just normal plain flour. Uh, before it goes into the batter, just to help the batter stick. I'll go through that when I do it. Um, we've got the oil, hot. We've got our tartar sauce ready. Um, we've got a lemon if you want to squeeze a lemon. We've got a vinegar if you want a little sprinkle of vinegar. 
we've got our chips ready to go in the oil and we've got our peas here in a pan. So I'm just going to take the chill off these because if they've been in the fridge, they're going to be cold. Okay, so just to speed up the process a little bit, I'm just going to warm them through just so they're not cold. And then when it comes to serving at the last minute, it's nice and fast, okay? So I'm just going to put them down to one side while we're going to cook everything else. Oil on, what I've done with this oil, uh, I just strained it. There's bits of the potatoes that got in there and started to go dark brown. I didn't really want that. Um, so I've just strained it into another pan. Uh, if you haven't got another pan, strain it into a container, but be really, really careful because you're messing around with the hot oil. Okay, so very, very carefully strain off the bits and pieces that are in there um, and then put it back in your pan and reheat it. Just got that oil. I'm just testing a bit of potato in the, in the oil to make sure it's nice and crispy. So there you go. When you, you've got nice crispy golden edges like that, you know your oil's ready. Yeah, it's smoking. Um, but obviously if you walk away from it, go and sit down and have a cup of tea while it's smoking, it's gonna be a problem. So stay with it. Don't ever leave a pan of hot oil, ever. We've got our fish and flour ready. We've got our chips ready to fry. So I'm just gonna put these chips in and start getting the color on them. So being very gent gentle and dropping them in. One or two at a time, no more than that. So again, I'll just get a little stir. Make sure nothing's sticking. It shouldn't stick anyway now. So that'll just settle down a minute. See what's going on, lift one out. See, they're, they're frying nicely. And all these little broken bits and edges, they, they, they get really crispy and they're full of flavor. I, I absolutely love them. When I see perfectly shaped chips and potatoes and stuff, all the little crispy bits going on, this is what you want. This, this to me is, these are perfect chips, okay? Stop saying okay. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> That's your Pesci. <laughs> your Pesci. Okay, okay. <laughs> Look at them, absolutely beautiful. So I'm just gonna take these out and put them on a, on a, onto a tissue. I mean, I want everything to be maximum crispy. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and do it all at, at a similar time. In we're gonna go with the fish. So we just pat it with the flour. Lay them on top of each other and then we're just going to knock off the excess flour before we go into the oil. We've got a batter, just going to give it another quick whisk. It's nice and chilled, piece by piece, batter. And we're just going to sway it and then just sway it back and forwards for a few minutes and then drop it in. So why do you do that? So the, um, the batter starts to cook and then it will, it will puff up, so the air gets into the batter. If you can see here, look, straight away, and it's floating. If you just drop it straight in, it's gonna stick to the bottom. I think that's a really good trick, isn't it? Yeah, you just need to hold it, you need to be brave, and just hold it backwards and forwards for 10 seconds, and then drop it in. I'm just gonna lift this out a minute. So now we've got our fish, and now I'm just gonna drop the chips back in. So it sounds, seems like a bit of messing around, but it's worth it. Okay, so chips are going back in. Again, being very careful. We don't want to start rushing because you're just going to splash yourself with fat. So on to the spoon, into the oil. They're going to color up. The fish is, is ready. I'm just going to redrop it very, very quickly. Okay, that one back in. Back in. Look at the chips now, so just you know, lift things out, make sure, look how golden they are now. And they're perfectly crispy. Uh, and it's just worth that extra little step, just to make sure. And then the chips coming on. Peas are nice and hot, just put them back on just to, so that took 10 seconds. So we're just gonna put the peas in, in a ring. You can also use like a, a pastry cutter if you like. Uh, it does the same thing, I'll use it to show you. You've got a nice clean shape on the plate. It works. So there's a, we're gonna put our fish on top of that. And we're gonna stack our chips up just nicely on the plate. A tart sauce on the plate. Traditional fish and chips with uh, crushed peas and tartar sauce. 